that the fundamental theorem says that the uh, degree of your polynomial is equal to the number of solutions. Okay? The degree of your polynomial is equal to the number of solutions. Um, and your x-intercepts can help you find uh, the polynomial. We can go two ways with this. Okay? The first way that we're going to do this is we are going to write polynomials when we know what their zeros are. Okay, if we know what their zeros are, we are going to write the actual polynomial expression for that. But before we do that, we need to talk about something. There's a property of complex and irrational roots <coughs> slash zeros. Remember, those words are interchangeable. They come in what we call conjugate pairs. Okay, they come in what we call conjugate pairs. So um, we'll get to that here in a minute. I just wanted to go ahead and throw that information out there before we get started. So let's look at example number seven. Okay, they give us four zeros. So that means that our polynomial should be degree four. These are four real zeros. So our polynomial is going to be degree four. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go backwards. Okay, we're going to go backwards. If these are our zeros, we need to write them as linear factors. Okay, we need to write them as linear factors. So here's how we're going to do that. Uh, you can write y equals, you can, uh, let's go with f of x. Okay, I like to use function notation because that comes up more often later, later down the road. Okay. Now, anytime there's a zero, I like to put that one first. Okay, so x minus zero, well we know subtracting zero really doesn't change it. We'll fix that here in a second. And then x minus five, x minus four, and x minus negative 4. Now, here in a minute, I'll kind of start streamlining this. But the, every time you change the sign, okay, you change the sign, you subtract the 0 when you put it into a linear factor every time. So we want the actual polynomial. We don't want it in factored form. We want the polynomial. So x minus 0 is just x. I'm going to keep the x minus 5. I'm going to go ahead and multiply out the x minus 4 and the x subtracting a negative is the same as adding positive. So really that's x plus 4. So x minus 4 times x plus 4, that's a special, that's a special quadratic there, isn't it? x minus 4 times x plus 4, what does that give us? x squared, x squared minus 16. That's the factoring of the difference of perfect squares. Now, if you don't see that, that's fine. You can multiply it out, but it's just really helpful if you do recognize that um, to go ahead and just kind of streamline your process, okay? Uh, now, we have a choice at this point what we want to multiply next. Typically, I keep that x in front. I just keep it there. Um, I do that last. So I want to go ahead and multiply those two binomials, x minus 5 times x squared minus 16. So x times x is, uh, x times x squared is x cubed. We've got minus 16x minus 5x squared plus 30, uh, 40. 5 times 6 is 30, yeah, no, 80. Yeah, 40 was not enough. 80. Okay. And then last step, we distribute that x to everything, and I'm going to put it in standard form. So x times x cubed is x to the fourth. Uh, x times negative 5x squared is negative 5x cubed. x times negative 16x is negative 16x squared. And x times 80 is 80x. So that is our function. So the cool thing about this is we can definitely check our work. Okay, all we have to do is go in and type in our polynomial. Obviously, this is easiest when um, we have all real zeros. We'll look here in a second where we don't have, where we have some that are not real. Um, but we can graph it, and really, I would go to the table uh, and check and make sure that at negative 4, I get 0, at 0, I get 0, and at 4 and 5, I get 0. Okay, and I do. So that means chances are I wrote that polynomial correctly. It's very unlikely that it would get those four values right and not be the correct polynomial.
Okay, let's look at number eight. Zero, negative four, and three. So same deal. Um, it's just a little bit easier because we only have three uh, zeros, so that means this is going to be a cubic function. So when zero is one of our zeros, that means we have just x. Negative four as a factor is x plus four. Three as a factor is x minus three. Foil, we get x squared plus x minus 12. If you need to take two steps to show, you know, the entire expansion and then combine like terms, that's fine. I'm just streamlining it. And then we distribute the x, x cubed plus x squared minus 12x. Okay, so not quite as involved as the last one because we didn't have as many zeros. It's not as big of a polynomial. <coughs> now, what happens if we got fractions? Ooh. Okay, so let's look at this. We have 5 over 4, and then after that it says multiplicity, well that's a, an abbreviation for multiplicity 2. That means 5 fourths is a repeated root. That means it's a factor twice and then negative 1 half. So uh, let's do this. First of all, we need to put these in a linear factor form. It's not quite as straightforward as uh, before. Okay, so x is equal to 5 fourths, okay? I gotta work backwards and make this equal zero. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by four. So I get 4x is equal to five. And then I'm gonna subtract the five. So 4x minus five is equal to zero. That is my linear factor when five over four is one of my zeros. Okay. I'll do it again with the, with the one half so that you can see. My x equals negative one half, so I need to solve this so that it's equal to zero. So I multiply both sides by two. Two x is equal to negative one. It needs to be equal to zero, so I add one. So two x plus one equals zero is my linear factor. So, Mm, let's set this up. We have 2x plus 1 times 4x minus 5, but that had multiplicity of 2, so I have to list that one twice. 4x minus 5 times 4x minus 5. So we've got 2x plus 1 times, that's a perfect square trinomial. 4x times 4x is 16x squared. My outside gives me negative 20x, my inside gives me negative 20x, so I get negative 40x for my middle term, and negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Then we have a binomial times a trinomial. That's why we did this the other day. 2x times 16x squared is 32x cubed. 2x times negative 40x is negative 80x. 2x times 25 is 50x. And then everything's multiplied by 1. So 16x squared minus 40x plus 25. And finally, I can combine my like terms. 32x cubed. I missed a squared somewhere, didn't I? Yep, 80x squared. Sorry. Negative 80 plus 16 is negative 70, negative 64 x squared plus 10 x plus 25. Ooh, that one took a little while. Okay, well, let's see if I got room over here for number 10. <coughs> Negative one fifth, three halves, and negative two are my zeros. Uh, if it's okay with you, I'm going to skip the like the solving process that I went through on the last one. If you need to do that, that's fine. I'm just trying to save time and space. So that's going to be five x plus one. That's going to be two x minus three and x plus 2. I've been doing this for a really long time. That's how I can see that that easily, okay? I encourage you to go through the process I went through the first time. 
So uh, we can multiply them in any order that we want to. Uh, so how about we go ahead and multiply the first two, just to kind of change it up and to show you that you don't have to do the last two and then multiply by the first one. So 5x times 2x is 10x squared. We've got minus 15x on the outside plus 2x, so that's minus 13x on the inside and minus 3 for the last. I'm going to draw a line so y'all don't think that these problems are merging. Uh, multiply everything by x. 10x cubed minus 13x squared minus 3x. Multiply everything by 2. 20x squared minus 26x minus 6. So my polynomial with zeros of negative 1 fifth, 3 halves, and negative 2 is 10x cubed plus 7x squared minus 29x minus 6. And I could plug it into my y equals and check. Um, I would just have to, this time I wouldn't be able to find those on the table. Um, so I actually have an option. Let me show you something that you may not know is there. Um, 10x, 0, 10x cubed plus 7x squared minus 29x minus 6. I can press second, trace. That very first one is value. Okay, so when I press enter, it's going to graph it, and then it's going to pop up and say x equals. I can type in negative one-fifth, and it should give me zero. And I can type in, I can just keep typing in as long as I don't press clear, it'll just keep popping up. Three halves, it gives me zero. Negative two, it gives me zero. Okay, so that's another way you can check these. Okay, yes ma'am. Because uh, the outside's negative 15, the inside's positive 2. Negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. Okay? Any other questions about these examples so far? All right. Probably at this point you have glanced down at what else we've got to do, and it looks a little intimidating. So, we're going to pause for a second.